Hey, what's up? It's Frank here. I just wanted to do a quick intro to what you're about to hear. The team I work on, we're working on a series of events throughout the United States called AI Discovery Day. And the purpose of which is to, well, discover AI. And be sure to look for it online for a city near you. Today, I recorded this particular session that I gave on computer vision in Malvern, Pennsylvania, which is just outside Philadelphia. So, enjoy. Data and AI TSP, I'm a data scientist, certified data scientist, so I'm not only certified, but I am certifiable, but I'm also certified. I'm also a certified data engineer. I'm one test away from getting the certified AI engineer one, too. Um, happy to talk about the, that program and whatnot, but um, did you have anything to say, or can I get started? No. Okay. Hi. How did the last lab go, or did you do no, it's just an intro. Oh, it's just an intro. Gotcha. Okay. So this is your first lab, and we'll be talking about uh, some custom vision, uh, building some, not custom vision, but some computer vision solutions. Um, I uh, quick uh, seamless plug for my podcast, uh, datadriven.tv. Uh, I also write about artificial intelligence in MSDN Magazine, so if at the end of this presentation you just can't get enough, um, you can go to aka.ms uh, slash frankmsdn. Uh, but really the core message I want to uh, point out here is that practical artificial intelligence is no longer science fiction. I think that's a key because you, you see these things with chatbots and you think that's just too crazy. It can't be real or it can't be practical. But in fact, it is. Um, and in fact, you don't need uh, to be a data scientist. You, you don't need advanced um, uh, degrees in mathematics. However, you know, uh, <laughs> it's not, that never hurts. Uh, but you don't need it. And really, this is all about democratizing AI and making it so that more organizations can leverage artificial intelligence in various solutions. So to that end, you're probably thinking, can it really be that simple? And yes, thanks to cognitive services, it in fact really is. We have a number of services uh, from custom uh, computer vision, speech, language, knowledge, search. We saw what you could do with search and knowledge. Uh, as well as some things that are kind of emerging kind of in the labs. Microsoft has something called Microsoft Research, uh, often abbreviated MSR, and they are really good about getting things from, from kind of the lab to production. In fact, there's some Power BI stuff that I was at a customer with yesterday, and the, the paper that was uh, kind of the inspiration behind it, uh, can't tell you what it is yet, but you'll have to wait till next week, but um, the paper that inspired it was published in May of 2018. And here we are, it's going to be launched, rolled into a product sometime in, in, in November. That type of life cycle from, from lab to production is, is, is pretty much unprecedented. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about slides, but I want you to think about this. I want you to start kind of putting this together in your head. You can combine these, right? Uh, you saw the smart um, conference room, right? It used comp, uh, speech to text, NLP, natural language processing, uh, as well as computer vision, right? So you can get some interesting insights just based on stock webcams or, or just basic type of stuff. Um, so this particular section here is going to talk about the computer vision um, APIs, and we're going to do a lab on um, basically how do you implement that and uh, given a test set of images, and then you're going to dump that into a Cosmos DB database. Um, so kind of get you a, a chance to kind of experiment with this. Um, so if you're not familiar, some of you are familiar with the, uh, the Vision API, but one of the things you can do is you can pull back uh, information about face, faces. You can get, um, you know, is there a smile, the probability of a smile, right? That's a number from zero to one. Um, you can get the pitch, roll, and yaw, um, as well as uh, the gender, whether or not there's facial hair. Uh, glasses, no glasses, emotion, all sorts of rich information here. Um, you could uh, detect faces in an image. So you can, um, one thing you could do is you could detect is someone walking up to your uh, kiosk, right? Uh, you can uh, group them. You can look for similar faces, verify a person, right? Facial recognition. Uh, you can detect certain um, uh, attributes of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a person. You can get their... Uh, their, the, what direction they're looking at, right? So this would be great for, I've seen self-driving uh, car demos where, um, or not so much self-driving car, but um, things where you put a dash cam facing at a driver 
and lets you know if they're, they're showing signs of fatigue or exhaustion, right? Did they look at their phone for too long, right? Was the car moving when they looked at their phone, right? Uh, all these sorts of things that you can you can combine these together. So the, the, the Uber um, login for the driver So, I mean, you're seeing this in real, this is not science fiction. This isn't kind of us, you know, talking about how great the future is. I mean, a lot of this is already being done. In fact, um, this is a, a real world example of uh, not this particular picture, but there's a uh, Microsoft partner organization that is working with a major uh, sports league and they have digital signage, right? So you go up and you figure out, hey, where am I going to sit? You look at the si signs looking back at you, right? It knows your gender, your age, uh, are you, your mood, right? So you can get real-time crowd metrics. Um, you know, you can figure out emotion, right? So uh, all these sorts of things that you can get just from visual data. It's very amazing what can be done. Now, also, there's the video indexer where you can upload your video and go, and you can improve, um, you know, engagement with the video, right? So you can... Um, work around figuring out highlight clips. You can you, all this rich metadata that exists in kind of this unstructured data is now accessible to you, and you don't have to roll your own or, or, or write your own code to do this, which does require a certain uh, an order of magnitude of skills greater than just being able to to make a call to a REST API. Um, so some of the things that you can do is you can um, do more with. Um, Extracting information, so this would you give it an image, it'll it'll come up with a, a number of descriptions. It'll give you the tags and the confidence with this. Anytime you're dealing with uh, anything algorithmic, um, you often deal with the notion of confidence, right? Um, and the slides are advancing on their own, which is quite disturbing. I think the machines are starting to take over. But I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I just basically want to. To point out that you can feed this here, you can analyze an image, um, not just understand the context, but also understand the contents of an image, right? OCR, right? Uh, if you go to JFK, if you just do a search for JFK files and you look for Lee Harvey Oswald, and it has a mugshot of him, and the description says "man posing for camera," right? And it doesn't really understand mugshots, so it just assumes that you're posing for the camera but it'll actually read the text that's on the little placard that he's holding under on the mugshot. It'll actually do the OCR on that. So some very interesting things. You can actually do uh, celebrity recognition. So, um, you know, 200,000 celebrities. So if there's a picture of someone, you have no idea who they are, but your kid does, you can kind of uh, take a picture of that person. Um, you also get some other interesting metadata about it. You know, the dominant color background, dominant foreground, all sorts of things. Um, as well as, you know, content filtering, right? Is it adult? Is it racy? Um, OCR, right? You can get, um, you know, you know, it's typical kind of motivational quote on, uh, you would find on, on Instagram. You can get the actual text data off of it, right? Very useful. Um, it's great for scanned documents. In fact, if you spend a lot of time playing around with the JFK files example, it's all been scanned, right? And they mention that in the video, but, uh, you can actually do an index search and it'll actually show you where it is. If you're kind of in the content business, uh, there's this notion of smart thumbnails, right, where the computer will cut the image where it thinks that the center of focus would be, right? Better than random guessing. Uh, and with smart cropping on, you can get that. Content moderation lets you examine content, uh, so you uh, can kind of automate that and scale out any kind of content-based um, thing. Um, text moderation, you can get text sentiment, although that's a different uh, subject. But these are all the things that you can do here with, um, with these tools. There's also something called custom vision, which uh, I actually wrote an MSDN article about it, where I put a demo together for a customer, or a transport company, and I wanted to be able to look at pictures of train tracks and tell, is this train track broken or not? Right now, when I had to write the article about it, I couldn't get the release for the, the train track images I just found online. So I took my kids' train toys and lined them up and broke them and, and, and trained the image on that. With about 25 images, I was able to, to get it with a reasonable amount of accuracy. So 
Transfer learning is one of those things where instead of using tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of images, you can get away with a smaller sample set. All right, so with that, any questions right now? This lab is the lab between you and, um, and lunch, I guess. So, um, but I just want you to, to, to know that it's not just vision, it's not just speech, it's not just language, it's all the above. And there's no law saying you can't use or mix and match. And that's kind of the Lego approach where you can create some interesting customized solutions uh, tailored to your thing. Uh, as I mentioned, a lot of interesting stuff coming out of the labs. Uh, I am a TSP, so I, I do, if you, uh, um, this is my territory, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks for listening to this uh, live recording that I did. Uh, at Data Driven, we're always experimenting on trying new things. This particular session was actually live streamed uh, using Facebook, but this time we did something a little different. Only live streamed the audio. Yes, that is an option in the Facebook app. And uh, let us know what you think of this idea and uh, whether or not it was a good idea, bad idea. Um, and uh, one last thing I'd like to mention is that Audible is a sponsor. And on the way up and back to uh, Philadelphia, I listened to The Power of Habit. Very interesting book, very insightful book, and a very data-driven book. Yep, that's right. Uh, the book talks about habits, but there's a very large section of the book um, that covers targets, uh, analytics, and their observations of consumer habits, as well as the use of advanced analytics and uh, data science in retail. Very interesting book. Check it out. Go to thedatadrivenbook.com, and you'll be redirected to Audible. And if you're not already a subscriber to Audible, you'll get one free audiobook. Thanks, and have a great day. Thanks for listening to Data Driven. Don't just listen, become a data driver by going to datadriven.tv to sign up to join the community, access to special events, tips and tricks, and more. Sign up today at datadriven.tv.